I have these plywood rectangle shapes. I get them from Hobby Lobby. They come eight in a pack and they measure about 5.3 inches by two and a half inches. And I'm going to need two packs of them. I'm going to take 12 of the rectangles and at the one end I'm going to mark in about a half an inch on the left side and starting at the top left corner I'm going to draw a straight line down to the half inch mark that I marked off at the bottom. I'm going to do that both on the right and the left side. So basically I want the sides of the rectangle to now be on an angle and then the one end to be a little shorter than the top. Now I have these metal shears. They cut this thin plywood really good. I use them a lot for my popsicle sticks and these plywood pieces were thin enough that I could use them on this. This is just another option if you do not have a table saw or something that you can cut these easier with. So I took the remaining 11 pieces and I just traced the one template on top of each piece and then I just cut all of them to be the same shape. Now the metal shears don't really give a clean cut so the edges were very rough so I just took my hand sander and I'm just going to sand all the little pieces of wood off. You can also just use a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to take my Wise Owl Snow Owl paint and I'm going to give all of them one coat of the Snow Owl. Now you can really pick any color of your choice. And then I'm going to allow all of that to fully dry. I have these two wreath rings. One measures 14 inches, the other measures 8 inches. I've recently found a pack of three at the Dollar Tree, but the outer ring here was from Michael's. The inner ring was part of the pack from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take my Krylon Shortcut Black Spray Paint and just spray paint both of the rings black. I had two wooden dowels that I cut in half, so now I have four small pieces. And I'm going to paint all of those with the Wise Owl Black. And then I'm just going to set that aside to dry. I have these number stencils. They're uh, two inch numbers. I believe I got these from Dollar General. And I'm going to take my first wooden piece, a foam dabber, and some black Wise Owl paint, and I'm going to put the number 12 on it. I like to connect the number where there was a little space in the stencil, so I just take a very small angled art brush and just fill that in. Now since I'm going to be reusing this stencil, I just took some baby wipes and just wiped the paint off and then I would just dry it. And whenever we're stenciling, we use these foam dabbers. You want a very small amount of paint on it. And I'm going to put the numbers 1 through 12 on each piece of wood. The less paint you have on your foam dabber, the better results you'll have. You'll have less bleeding. That's why I have the paper plate. I kind of dab a little on my dabber dab off onto the side of the plate and then go to my stencil. And then I'm going to allow all of that to dry. Once it's fully dry, I took a piece of sandpaper and now I'm just going to sand it. This is just going to help smooth it out. And also if you do get a little bleeding on your numbers, it kind of just gives it a little bit of a distressed look. Now you can see since I sanded it, it kind of made the black dull. That's why I like to take the furniture salve, it kind of rebrightens it. Now because my numbers were black when I sanded, some of the black did get into the white, but that was kind of the look I was going for. I do not want these crisp clean. I took my two wreath rings and the four dowels that I have, and I'm going to lay them around my circle. And I'm going to try to do it as even as I can. It's not going to be perfect as everything was hand cut. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to add my 11, 12, and 1 in the first section, the 2, the 3, the 4 in the second section. 
the five, the six, and the seven in the bottom section, and then the eight, the nine, and the 10 in the last section. And I want to try to keep the 12, three, six, and nine across from each other the best that I can. Again, this is not going to be perfect. And then I'm going to glue all that in place with my hot glue gun. I do recommend if you can use the E6000, that's just going to be a stronger hold. And also, I do recommend if you're going to glue on a surface that it be one of those silicone mats so that the hot glue does not stick to the bottom of your surface. And I went around the entire wreath ring with the numbers and I glued them in place and then I glued the wood dowels in place as well. Now I get my finger protectors from Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack. And it just helps prevent me from burning my finger. I got this clock kit from Hobby Lobby. It was much more expensive at Hobby Lobby than on Amazon. So I do encourage you to look on Amazon. They usually come two in a pack. You can get many different size hands. So I just put the motor and the hands together and it takes one double-a battery and I made sure my motor was a circle so that way I can just use that in the center before I attach that I'm just going to glue a hanger to the back and I just used e6000 in a picture hanger and then I'm going to use the E6000 and put some on the end of each wooden dowel. And then I'm going to take my clock motor and just lay that in the center. And then this dried overnight. You want the E6000 to really have a chance to fully cure. And there we go. Now we have this very easy farmhouse windmill clock. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Paint products, tissue paper, transfers, and mesh stencils can all be found on our webpage at chalkitupfancy.com. And don't forget, you can also check out other tutorials over on our webpage. Have a great day.